Grace Brewster Murray Hopper was an American computer scientist and United States Navy Rear Admiral. In 1944, she was one of the first programmers of the Harvard Mark I computer and invented the first compiler for a computer programming language. She popularized the idea of machine-independent programming languages, which led to the development of COBOL, one of the first high-level programming languages. Owing to her accomplishments and her naval rank, she was sometimes referred to as Amazing Grace. The U.S. Navy guided missile destroyer was named for her, as was the Cray XE-6 Hopper supercomputer at NERSC. On November 22, 2016, she was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. Early Life and Education Hopper was born in New York City. She was the eldest of three children. Her parents, Walter Fletcher Murray and Mary Campbell Van Horn, were of Dutch and Scottish descent, and attended West End Collegiate Church. Her great-grandfather, Alexander Wilson Russell, an admiral in the U.S. Navy, fought in the Battle of Mobile Bay during the Civil War. Grace was very curious as a child, this was a lifelong trait. At the age of seven, she decided to determine how an alarm clock worked, and dismantled seven alarm clocks before her mother realized what she was doing, she was then limited to one clock. For her preparatory school education, she attended the Hartridge School in Plainfield, New Jersey. Hopper was initially rejected for early admission to Vassar College at age 16, her test scores in Latin were too low, but she was admitted the following year. She graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Vassar in 1928 with a bachelor's degree in mathematics and physics and earned her master's degree at Yale University in 1930. In 1934, she earned a Ph.D. in mathematics from Yale under the direction of Esteen Oreg in her dissertation, New Types of Irreducibility Criteria, was published that same year. Hopper began teaching mathematics at Vassar in 1931 and was promoted to associate professor in 1941. She was married to New York University professor Vincent Foster Hopper, 1906 from 1930 until their divorce in 1945. She did not marry again, but chose to retain his surname. Career World War II Hopper had tried to enlist in the Navy early in the war. She was at age 34, too old to enlist and her weight-to-height ratio was too low. She was also denied on the basis that her job as a mathematician she was a mathematics professor at Vassar College was valuable to the war effort. During World War II in 1943, Hopper obtained a leave of absence from Vassar and was sworn into the United States Navy Reserve, one of many women to volunteer to serve in the waves. She had to get an exemption to enlist, she was below the Navy minimum weight of she reported in December and trained at the Naval Reserve Midshipman's School at Smith College in Northampton, Massachusetts. Hopper graduated first in her class in 1944, and was assigned to the Bureau of Ships Computation Project at Harvard University as a lieutenant, junior grade. She served on the Mark I computer programming staff headed by Howard H. Aiken. Hopper and Aiken co-authored three papers on the Mark I also known as the Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator. Hopper's request to transfer to the regular Navy at the end of the war was declined due to her advanced age of 38. She continued to serve in the Navy Reserve. Hopper remained at the Harvard Computation Lab until 1949, turning down a full professorship at Vassar in favor of working as a research fellow under a Navy contract at Harvard. Univac. In 1949, Hopper became an employee of the Eckerd Mochley Computer Corporation as a senior mathematician and joined the team developing the Univac I. When she recommended that a new programming language be developed using entirely English words, she was told very quickly that she couldn't do this because computers didn't understand English. This idea was not accepted for three years, and she published her first paper on the subject, Compilers, in 1952. In the early 1950s, the company was taken over by the Remington Rand Corporation, and it was while she was working for them that her original compiler work was done. The compiler was known as the A compiler and its first version was A0. In 1952 she had an operational compiler. 
Nobody believed that, she said. I had a running compiler and nobody would touch it. They told me computers could only do arithmetic. In 1954 Hopper was named the company's first director of automatic programming, and her department released some of the first compiler-based programming languages, including Mathematic and Flowmatic. COBOL In the spring of 1959, computer experts from industry and government were brought together in a two-day conference known as the Conference on Data Systems Languages, CODASIL. Hopper served as a technical consultant to the committee, and many of her former employees served on the short-term committee that defined the new language COBOL, an acronym for Common Business Oriented Language. The new language extended Hopper's Flowmatic language with some ideas from the IBM equivalent, Comtran. Hopper's belief that programs should be written in a language that was close to English, rather than in machine code or in languages close to machine code, such as assembly languages, was captured in the new business language, and COBOL went on to be the most ubiquitous business language to date. From 1967 to 1977, Hopper served as the director of the Navy Programming Languages Group in the Navy's Office of Information Systems Planning and was promoted to the rank of captain in 1973. She developed validation software for COBOL and its compiler as part of a COBOL standardization program for the entire Navy. Standards In the 1970s, Hopper advocated for the Defense Department to replace large, centralized systems with networks of small, distributed computers. Any user on any computer node could access common databases located on the network. She developed the implementation of standards for testing computer systems and components, most significantly for early programming languages such as Fortran and COBOL. The Navy tests for conformance to these standards led to significant convergence among the programming language dialects of the major computer vendors. In the 1980s, these tests, and their official administration, were assumed by the National Bureau of Standards, NBS, known today as the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. Retirement In accordance with Navy attrition regulations, Hopper retired from the Naval Reserve with the rank of commander at age 60 at the end of 1966. She was recalled to active duty in August 1967 for a six-month period that turned into an indefinite assignment. She again retired in 1971, but was again asked to return to active duty in 1972. She was promoted to captain in 1973 by Admiral Elmo R. Zumwalt, J.R. After Republican Rep. Philip Crane saw her on a March 1983 segment of 60 Minutes, he championed, a joint resolution originating in the House of Representatives, which led to her promotion to Commodore, Admiral, 07, by special presidential appointment. She remained on active duty for several years beyond mandatory retirement by special approval of Congress. In 1985, the rank of Commodore was renamed Rear Admiral, Lower Half. She retired, involuntarily, from the Navy on August 14, 1986. At a celebration held in Boston on the to commemorate her retirement, Hopper was awarded the Defense Distinguished Service Medal, the highest non-combat decoration awarded by the Department of Defense. At the time of her retirement, she was the oldest active duty commissioned officer in the United States Navy, 79 years, 8 months, and 5 days, and aboard the oldest commissioned ship in the United States Navy, 188 years, 9 months, and 23 days. Admirals William D. Leahy, Chester W. Nimitz, Hyman G. Rickover and Charles Stewart were the only other officers in the Navy's history to serve on active duty at a higher age. Leahy and Nimitz served on active duty for life due to their promotions to the rank of Fleet Admiral. She was then hired as a senior consultant to Digital Equipment Corporation, a position she retained until her death in 1992, aged 85. Her primary activity in this capacity was as a goodwill ambassador, lecturing widely on the early days of computers, her career, and on efforts that computer vendors could take to make life easier for their users. She visited most of Digital's engineering facilities, where she generally received a standing ovation at the conclusion of her remarks. She often recounted that during her service she was frequently asked by admirals and generals why satellite communication would take so long. 
so during many of her lectures, she illustrated a nanosecond using salvaged obsolete Bell System 25 pair telephone cable, cut it to 11.8 inch, 30 centimeters, lengths, the distance that light travels in one nanosecond, and handed out the individual wires to her listeners. Although no longer a serving officer, she always wore her Navy full dress uniform to these lectures, which is allowed by U.S. Navy uniform regulations. Death Hopper died in her sleep of natural causes on New Year's Day 1992 at her home in Arlington, Virginia, she was 85 years of age. She was interred with full military honors in Arlington National Cemetery. Anecdotes Throughout much of her later career, Hopper was much in demand as a speaker at various computer-related events. She was well known for her lively and irreverent speaking style, as well as a rich treasury of early war stories. She also received the nickname Grandma Cobal. While she was working on a Mark II computer at a U.S. Navy research lab in Dahlgren, Virginia in 1947, her associates discovered a moth stuck in a relay impeding its operation. While neither Hopper nor her crew mentioned the phrase debugging in their logs, the case was held as an instance of literal debugging, perhaps the first in history. The term bug had been in use for many years in engineering. The remains of the moth can be found in the group's logbook at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. Grace Hopper is famous for her nanoseconds visual aid. People, such as generals and admirals, used to ask her why satellite communication took so long. She started handing out pieces of wire that were just under one foot long, 11.80 inches, the distance that light travels in one nanosecond. She gave these pieces of wire the metonym nanoseconds. She was careful to tell her audience that the length of her nanoseconds was actually the maximum speed the signals would travel in a vacuum, and that signals would travel more slowly through the actual wires that were her teaching aids. Later she used the same pieces of wire to illustrate why computers had to be small to be fast. At many of her talks and visits, she handed out nanoseconds to everyone in the audience, contrasting them with a coil of wire nearly a thousand feet long, representing a microsecond. Later, while giving these lectures while working for DIS, she passed out packets of pepper, calling the individual grains of ground pepper picoseconds. J. Elliot described Grace Hopper as appearing to be all Navy, but when you reach inside, you find a pirate dying to be released.